What's up everybody, my name is Ryan Trevord and welcome to the second video all about the PlayStation 3, PlayStation Vita, and PSP store closing and my recommendations for what games you should pick up from those stores before they disappear. Of course, this week's episode, all about the PSP. So I'm a huge fan of the PSP. I, I've loved the, the console ever since I picked one up on launch day. Um, and the digital only offerings on the PSP are kind of slim pickings. Um, you don't have a whole lot of them, which is funny because they did a digital only version of the PSP with the PSP Co. I don't know what they were thinking with that again. Like I love the concept of like a digital only handheld, but you, you have barely any of the PSP library on, on digital services. So it was a little bit easier to put this list together um, versus the PS3 list. Um, but the same criteria kind of applies with this list where I'm gonna um, factor in the fact that of course, more expensive games physically are definitely going to get a higher bump on this list. Um, but more so, I wanted to make sure again that this list isn't just going to price charting and starting by most expensive PSP games. Obviously, I want to make sure that this list of recommendations is also just a list of fun games. And I will give you fair warning right now, dear viewer, there's a lot of JRPGs on this list because surprisingly, a lot of the really good digital offerings on the PSP are RPGs for the most part. So um, let's dive right into it with our first set of games. Now, anyone who knows me knows I love Persona. I love I've loved the Persona series for so long, um, and it's a fantastic set of RPGs. However, I really had missed the boat on P Persona One and Two, and I didn't really know until a couple of years ago while doing some research. You know what? What were the best ways to go pr play Persona One and Two? And honestly, I think the best way to play those games now are with the PSP versions. So we've got the P PSP versions of Persona, Persona 2, I Innocent Sin, and Persona 3 Portable. Um, I think all three of them are well worth the pickup on uh, PSP. Um, again, they are very different from, from modern Persona games, or at least uh, Persona 1 and Persona 2 are. Persona 3, of course, was kind of the, the genesis uh, that, that sort of spawned the new way uh, of designing all the Persona games. Like the, it's very much plays just like Persona 3 or Persona 5, do. So if you've never played Persona 3, um, the, the portable version is great. Although I will recommend though, the, the, the PS2 FES version, probably a little bit better because, uh, the, the PSP version is missing the anime cutscenes. Like they have the intro sequence, but for the most part, you're missing a lot of the, the cool cutscenes that they put into that game. Um, not only that, but you can't freely explore the environments. You, you basically go on a map and point and kind of clicked it to where you want to go kind of thing. It, it plays more like a visual novel and an RPG mixed together um, than Persona 4 does or Persona 3 on, on consoles does. So, but it does give you the female perspective, which I do think is well worth playing for anyone who's played Persona 3 already. But that's enough about that. Persona 1 and 2 though, fantastic games and definitely the, the best way to play them for sure is definitely the, the PSP versions, especially because they made a bunch of different tweaks to the games. Not only that, but Persona 2 Innocent Sin is the, the very first time we got that version of the game in North America um, because we got its sequel, uh, Persona 2 Eternal Punishment, but not the first one. So now, and it's weird because we got the first game on Vita and they lo they did a remake of Eternal Punishment but they didn't release it here. I don't understand the logic behind that, but luckily you can pick up Persona 2 Eternal Punishment as a PlayStation 1 classic on your PSP. So you can still play it that way. Um, but I highly recommend these games. These are also probably the most expensive games on PSP. So um, it's worth it just from a financial aspect as well, because these games are like $20 each or $200 for a physical copy of Persona 3 Portable just on its own, let alone Persona 1 or 2, which are ridiculously expensive too. So um, I highly recommend checking these out on, on the PSP digital story store. Like if you're going to pick up one set of games from this entire list, make it Persona 1, 2, and 3. Next up is a JRPG that's really close to my heart and is one of the JRPG series that really got me into RPGs in general, and that's Lunar with Lunar Silver Star Harmony. This is actually a remake of the Sega CD classic Lunar the Silver Star, which, in, in fact, funny enough, that got a remake on PS1 called Lil Lunar Silver Star Story, but then Silver Star Harmony is actually a remake of the PS1 version. So again, it's kind of like the, the snake eating its own tail kind of thing. Um, but Lunar, fantastic JRPG from Game Arts, makers of Grandia. So if you've played the Grandia games, but have never checked out Lunar, you definitely should. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a great story um, that I love how music kind of is like a big factor in the story as well. Um, and you kind of travel the world with your friends. It's got great 
cutscenes as well. Um, it, the story holds up really well. Um, they did some interesting with, things with uh, Silver Star Harmony. The game's a little bit easier. So if you ever played the older Lunar games and had a bit of trouble with it, this is definitely the easiest way to play those games. Um, not only that, but they added additional story to the beginning of the game that kind of um, sets up the events for the, the the back half of the game, essentially. But it does kind of spoil some things too, um, which I don't know how I feel about that. But Silver Star, Lunar Silver Star Harmony is is creeping up in price and it'll probably be pretty expensive when this, once the store closes. Um, so this is a game I highly recommend, not only because I, I, it's, it's going to be expensive, but it's also really fun and I highly recommend it. Next up, this one is kind of a weird one. You might be thinking, Ryan, why are you recommending Final Fantasy IV Complete Edition? And the answer, dear friends, is that Final Fantasy IV Complete Edition, while it is not currently an expensive game, I suspect that this will be more expensive after the store cl closes. Not only that, but it's probably the best way to play Final Fantasy IV because not only did is it kind of a, a faithful remake of Final Fantasy IV that doesn't do like the, the terrible art style Final Fantasy IV thing that I hate with the, the mobile versions of Final Fantasy IV, um, but it also gives you the sequel to Final Fantasy IV, which is Final Fantasy IV The After Years, which was a Wii Shop exclusive um, that did actually come to PSP in the form of this collection as well. And again, now that the Wii Shop's gone, this is your last chance to be able to buy this game digitally. So this is the type of game I always love to have on my PSP, um, and it's honestly the perfect type of game to play on the go, um, which is one of the reasons why I highly recommend it as well. Uh, although, again, you can say that about any JRPG, but Final Fantasy IV, one of my favorite Final Fantasy games anyways, combined with the fact that you've got the after years in this incredible package. I, I definitely think it's well worth the look. Again, it's not super expensive now, um, but I definitely recommend grabbing it now. Even if you decide to find like a, a cheaper physical copy, definitely pick this game up now while you still have the chance. Next up, I love strategy RPGs. Um, basically, the very first RPG I played, Shining Force 2, that really got me into RPGs What was a turn-based tactical game. Um, and next choice, Jean d'Arc, is actually one of my favorite turn-based tactical RPGs on the PSP. Um, this one kind of came out of nowhere when it first came out. Like, I wasn't really expecting anything from it. Um, I saw it on store shelves one day. I was like, oh, this kind of looks pretty cool. This kind of reminds me of Final Fantasy Tactics. I'll pick it up took it home, popped in my PSP, saw the, these amazing anime cinematics and, and saw some great gameplay and loved the heck out of this game. Again, it's basically trying to retell the story of Joan of Arc, but in this weird like anime style with like ghosts and stuff like it's really cool. So Jean d'Arc is a game that, again, I know a lot of people kind of missed. It's exclusive to PSP um, and it's definitely a game I highly recommend. Again, it's not a super expensive game, but I do think it's a game that is well worth owning. Sticking with turn-based tactical games, Valkyria Chronicles was actually one of my favorite PS3 games, and I was really happy to see that they finally did a sequel to it. However, I didn't love that that sequel was on the PSP. However, Valkyria Chronicles 2 turned out to be an awesome game. I mean, the, it, ta it kind of continues the story of Valkyria Chronicles. Again, it's, it's, it stars an entirely new cast of characters, so I don't think you have to play the first game to, to kind of get everything. They, they explain everything um, that, and catch you up to speed really well with this game. Um, but I do think that if you are a Valkyria Chronicles fan and you missed the PSV version, I do think that it is del definitely well worth the pickup. Again, not super expensive, but I never usually find this game anywhere. Um, so I definitely think it is worth a look for the digital version. Um, again, the digital version is actually pretty cheap. So um, I think that it is definitely a great pickup. If you like Valkyria Chronicles, if you played uh, either Valkyria Chronicles 4 or 1 on PlayStation 4, I definitely think you should check out Valkyria Chronicles 3, or sorry, 2, because I, I goofed, I was thinking about 3. That game never came out here. But Valkyria Chronicles 2, definitely well worth the pickup, whether you're going to pick it up digitally or physically. Um, it's a game that I definitely recommend you pick up in some capacity. Now, if you're someone who's known me for a long time, I usually love to shout from the rooftops that Parasite Eve is an awesome franchise. And while the, the PSP entry, The Third Birthday, is probably not the best in the series, in fact, it's actually my least favorite of the three games, um, it's definitely a game that I think is probably going to creep up in value when the store closes and is actually still a really fun game, despite the fact that it's not my favorite Parasite Eve game. Um, of course, it kind of wraps up the story in Parasite Eve. I'm not going to talk too much about the story because, again, I don't want to spoil anything for you, but um, it's a different from the other games because it's a uh, behind the back third person shooter rather than um, like an over the he overhead shooter or like an uh, Resident Evil RPG. But again, I've loved the concept of Parasite Eve. Again, it's kind of like 
Resident Evil meets Final Fantasy, which I, I love Resident Evil and Final Fantasy. So seeing those two franchises really come together in the, the hodgepodge that is Parasite Eve, um, that, that's one of the reasons why I love those games on PlayStation 1. Um, but I do think the third birthday, even though it's still not an amazing game, I still think it's a great game to pick up. And again, the type of game that I can foresee going up in value pretty soon. Castlevania has always been one of my favorite franchises, and Castlevania Dracula X Chronicles is a fantastic pickup on the PlayStation Portable. Now, we did get a Castlevania collection on PS4 that does include Castlevania Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night, which are the two games that are included in the PSP version. However, number one, I think that these ver these versions of the game actually play super well and are actually very different from the, the versions that we got on the PlayStation 4 or even their original versions. And uh, I do think that this is probably a pretty good package to pick up, um, especially if you're going to still be playing PSP games on your Vita or your PlayStation Portable. Uh, I think that they're great games on the go. Um, of course, Symphony of the Night on its own, fantastic game. But then having Rondo of Blood in, in the palm of your hands, I think, is uh, is a great pickup. So definitely check out Castlevania Dracula X Chronicles. Again, not a game that's super expensive right now, but I think is probably going to rise a little bit in price, um, especially because, again, this is another game like The Third Birthday um, or Valkyria Chronicles 2, where I don't see them physically too often, at least in my local area. Next up, one of the most expensive games on the PlayStation Portable is Ease 1 and 2 Chronicles. This is a collection that bundles Ease 1 and 2, which are fantastic JRPGs from back in the day on the, the PlayStation Portable. Again, these are great versions of these two games. And uh, unfortunately, again, there wasn't really a huge print run of, of the physical version. So your best bet is to pick these up digitally while you still can. Um, and they're fantastic. Again, you have Ease 1 and 2 on other platforms. So obviously I won't just say that this is the best way to play it or the only way to play it, but I do think it's a great place to play it. Again, these are another set of two games that are great to play portably. Um, and you're definitely going to, if you are interested at all in this collection, you're going to want to grab it now before it's going to be like $150 for a copy of this game complete. Next up, another one of the most expensive games on Vita, but a game that is still really fun to play today that I highly recommend is Fate Extra. This is actually a game uh, that is based off the Fate series of anime that I'm actually a pretty big fan of. Um, it's more of a third person action RPG um, where you get to play as some of the summons from, from the Fate series. Um, so you get to play as my waifu Saber, as well as some of the other characters from, from Fate, which is uh, pretty cool. So um, I haven't put too much time into this one, so I can't really elaborate too much on it, but all I've known from, from playing it, even the little bit that I played, I really like what I played here. This is the type of game that I kind of want to play sometime this year and kind of go through the entire game. Um, but I definitely recommend it now because physical prices already are stupidly expensive for this game. And I already know from the gameplay, from playing it, it's fun. So I do think it's definitely worth a pickup and a title that should probably be on your radar before the store expires in a few months. And last game, again, since we're, we're kind of out of the territory of the most expensive PSP games um, that are that are worth picking up. The last game I'm going to recommend is actually one of the most common PSP games, but a game that I think you should definitely own. Even if you have a physical copy of this, um, I think you should maybe grab a, a digital copy as well. Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions. This is a remake of the PS1 original um, with all new cutscenes, all new battles. Uh, they updated everything about this game, and it's probably the best way to play Final Fantasy Tactics. So um, again, if you've never played Final Fantasy Tactics before, again, it's a tactics game very similar to Fire Emblem, um, but in Final Fantasy style. Um, in fact, it has a lot in common with Project Triangle Strategy, which was recently announced for Nintendo Switch. And uh, Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions, great pickup on PSP. Um, again, I've actually noticed that the p digital version a lot of times is actually cheaper than the physical copy of the game. Um, so you're saving a little bit of money to pick it up there. But I wanted to kind of leave this last pick for what I think probably the best cheap game on the store is um, to, to definitely pick up. And Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lines definitely fits the bill with that game. And that's my list of PSP games on the digital store. Again, a lot easier to put together because, again, there was only maybe like 50 or 60 games to put put on this list. Um, but I do think all these games here, well worth picking up. Again, the PSP collection is a bit bare on the PS3 store um, right now. Um, and it's really, the PS3 store is really the only way you can kind of buy these games right now. Um, but I do think all these games here, you're going to have a lot of value because all, almost all these games are super long GRPGs and they're going to give you a lot of bang for your buck. So I definitely think that
that I've got a pretty good list here, but what do y'all think? Is there a PSP game I missed? Let me know in the comments below. Of course, you can find me on Twitter anytime at Ryan Turford. You also find our podcast, The Xbox Drive, over at youtube.com slash The Xbox Drive, or on podcast services around the globe. Also, if you want to see any of the other videos that I'm doing about uh, the, the PS3 store closing, um, you can click a link in the description of this video that'll bring you to the playlist that I have with all my recommendations for each individual console. Until then, friends, I'm Ryan Turford, and I'm out.